So before I talk about the problem, I need to talk about the thing I'm talking about. The fixation that everyone has or doesn't have. The places your eyes tend to wander or not wander. Sexuality, being gay or not gay. Liking to put things in places or places in things or not. Obviously I'm a person with my own senses and emotions. Obviously I recognize the awakenings anyone had due to endless Pixar moms. For some reason, particularly Pixar moms, obviously I didn't experience them. In fact, my childhood was spent not even really understanding what it meant to have crushes. Not that I ever claimed to have any. Not to say that childhood crushes really ever mean anything. And also not to say that no person could ever experience those deeper feelings before whatever age you normally experience them. I just didn't have them. And it made attraction sound like a mythical thing that only certain people get to experience. Okay, here I sound like someone asexual coming out to trillions of adoring YouTube fans, bravely, and between sips of White Claw in a cozy high desert mansion. In that same timeless way, I know now that attraction is as visceral as hunger, as close to the forefront of my consciousness as, I don't know, breathing or something. Or stream of consciousness femboy knee highs with the side of tomboy french fries from a modern Hooters with an 18 plus play place. So we live in a societies will pretty much take up this video full runtime. Okay, here's the statement. I'm gay. But where's the problem? You're either gay or not gay, attracted to men or not attracted to men, obsessed with RuPaul's Drag Race. Wait, there it is, the first disgust to death problem with condensing a culture into a label. The putting of the identified cart before the attributed horse. To give necessary context, I need to give an audience information that can't be well conveyed in the words normally used to convey it. I'm gay. To some people might sound like an admission, like a proclamation, like an endorsement or a denouncement. Language is pointless in its forced simplicity, since how would it ever make sense to actually lay out which stereotypical attributes of gay apply and which don't before stating the easy statement, I'm gay. It might sound like overthinking, and to some extent, it is. I guess it's not really possible for a concept to be elaborated upon before having been expressed without elaboration, but the issue with I'm gay is in the words I'm gay themselves. It's how people think of them. The concept of gay has been so pulled and stretched apart from every other concept like manhood or self-confidence that it feels like telling others you're gay is the same thing as announcing a journey you had to go through to arrive at some well-rounded self that suffered sadness but ultimately ended up relatively content. It's like asking people to make aimless accommodations, which don't affect their lives, by filing you into the different category. To me, it just feels like a nuisance to say I'm gay, even as clarification, and because of that, it feels inaccurate to say. It may help people grasp the established concept of being attracted to the same gender, but I don't think saying I'm gay does much more than further establish the categories of gay and not gay. Hey everyone, I say when I say it, I'm not in the not gay category. And the not not gay category has whatever infinite number of preconceived notions attached to it, informing the way not gay and not not gay people will maybe interact till the end of time, or the end of subtle profiling. No matter how much acceptance occurs in a culture with stereotypes, there will always be secret reasons to sort humans by attraction, skin color, or gender. And while labels probably deserve a complete video themselves, it feels like sexuality's labels are uniquely hard to get past. People generally make a social effort not to stereotype others based on skin color or gender, but feel perfectly fine treating not-not-gayness as a personality signaler, a reason to be comfortable or uncomfortable around someone, a suggestion that despite any masculine traits a not-not-gay person has, there must be femininity under them somewhere. Bro, that's so gay. I say derogatorily, but the questioning eyes still subtly Google. You learn as an, I guess, traditionally masculine person who discovered their sexuality in 8th grade and moved on in a couple days, just how important people think who you're attracted to must be. You'll learn that some people view themselves as straight or gay prior to thinking about what else they're interested in. You'll learn that a few not-not-gay people have taken up so much cultural space, being gay appears to a lot of people as one lifestyle and one lifestyle only. I've always just wanted to be a regular person with interests and hopes and beliefs and weaknesses, not whatever people's subtle expectations turn the concept of gay man into. But enough about me, the random experiencer of random cultural disconnect. Let's Let's talk about the disconnect itself. Having pursued a world where people can live how they choose, we've now accidentally implied the choices we make are more important than anything else. Like anything, calling yourself not not gay becomes representative of a set of actions you take outside the so-called norm. The gendered baptism, as some people call it. In reality, calling our choices by a label is only broadly important when fighting for freedom, in maintaining a movement that needs to exist to protect our right to make those choices, not in late night 2024 dive bar interactions with friends or new friends. By referring to gay, we mostly just call upon that wider culture of referring to gay, of saying you know Dorothy, or of mentioning strange eons. It may be rhetorically valuable, like reciting lines from beat literature between every other sentence, but the wider idea of gay isn't real. None of it is real. It's all trying to force you to fit who you're attracted to into a box defined nebulously by a million other people's online and in-person abstract definitions of gay. Lots of not-not-gay people haven't figured out how to separate that social, political definition of gay we subscribe to from the individual, the unclear, strange loop that everyone experiences. It's not just being attracted to men, because it can't be. Some people are on 
on average more attracted to men than women, more attracted to men than androids, than Valorant characters, than car exhaust pipes, and they'd all still call themselves gay. I do think that right now being a man attracted to men or the opposite or whatever else is kind of in a weird place. You have televangelists and pickup artists still screaming to millions of people that men attracted to men are bad. You have people trying to purposely conflate every possible stereotype with any label you're forced to call yourself, but you also have that number, 71%. I think most people are mostly accepting of unfamiliar lifestyles. The default, I think, is curiosity. But that word, gay, the not not gay category, the big nebulous social alphabet soup that conjures in non aphantasiatic people's minds an image of 10 pink speedo wearing men twerking on the street in front of terrified onlookers, we do have to reclaim the word gay in general to reverse the fear mongering that led people astray. But I don't know, beyond that, to me, gay kind of just preemptively feels obsolete.